That is Henry David there with a motivation. Success comes to those who are ready for it. Please get ready and get busy today. It's good to have you join us on the conversation showing on your digital first Pan-African news network. That is TOS Television. My name is Merciful Ajino. Before we bring you the big story for today, let us go and read some updates from across Africa. On the front page right here is uh, 11 Cameroonian University students were injured after a bomb was thrown onto the roof of a lecture hall in Cameroon's restive Anglophone region of Southwest. Uh, Sudan's main civilian political coalition did not accept any negotiation with the military on Wednesday, standing by its position at its first press conference since the October 25 coup led by General Abdel Fattah al buhan And now to Ethiopia, where victims in 2019 Ethiopian Airlines 737 MAX crash will be recompensed by Boeing after it agreed on Wednesday to acknowledge liability for compensatory damages in lawsuits filed by families of the 157 people killed, according to a filing, a filing rather, in U.S. District Court in Chicago. It's that time where I say you have to make sure that you are safe from the COVID-19. Ensure your loved ones are also safe. You know, take the vaccination efforts in your area. And we bring you the COVID-19 update from across Africa. After that, we we'll go to the big story. It's the conversation showing on your digital first Pan African news network. Is that time where I say you have to be a part of our social media community. Follow us across all our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at TOSTV Network. And of course, our website, stay updated on happenings in Nigeria and of course, across Africa, www.tostvnetwork.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page as well so you do not miss out on our amazing content. It's the big story crux of the conversation. And this morning, our focus is on insecurity, absence of telecommunication detriment or benefit. Joining us in the studio live is Adi Dakpo Banjo, a public affairs analyst, and of course, our team lead at TOS TV Network. You're here, you're welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well, thank okay. you. Okay, the focus is insecurity. Uh, we do know that um, Katsina State House of Assembly member representing a constituency, Honorable Jabi Rusuf, is of the opinion that the shutdown of telecommunication in Katsina State has made the insecurity situation worse. Uh, what do you make of the shutdown and um, how do you think it's better or worse? Okay, um, merciful, thank you for having me. Uh, ignorance is something that is very, if you, if you think that being wise or being knowledgeable mm. um, is cheap, then you should try ignorance. I have come to find out that a lot of people in Nigeria have been privileged to be in places where they shouldn't be. And so when some people make some statements, you wonder where that is coming from. The issue of security um, worldwide, security is a world phenomena. It's something that every country, every nation of the world take very seriously. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, in Nigeria, now, uh, the security architecture that we have doesn't seem to be working. It's not because Nigeria is not safe. It's because we never really metamorphosed into ensuring that we have the architecture in terms of security that can actually protect the Nigeria that we have today. Back in the day, it was a safe country. Uh, barely about 10 years ago, Nigeria was still a very safe country. You could be anywhere at any point in time. Now, coming down to what the senator said, uh, it, it baffles me a great deal, especially when we talk about uh, the effect of the global system for mobile communication, that's GSM now, mm. um, across the world. Major players in the security industry knows the uh, intricacies and the benefit of gathering intelligence mm. and information to be able to decipher uh, what is going on in a particular area. We know that back in the day, I, I still wonder how we survived it merciful mm -hmm. before gsm came to nigeria how do we communicate how do we interact and security in itself is elimination of threats and giving the people the benefit to feel free that sense of safety 
which a lot of Nigerians don't feel today. And so, paradventure, every state is beginning to say, how do the bandits or Boko Haram or Iswap, whichever group, the kidnappers, how do they get away with many of their, uh, many of their antics and, and many of the operations that they carry out successfully? Mm. Now, you begin to wonder, they make communication. They ensure that the environment where they're going to attack is free and that they can operate there, do whatever they have planned, carry out their, their operation very successfully without being caught. Mm. And so they obviously have people in town who communicate with them. There are no law enforcers here. There are no police uh, presence, no military presence. You can come now and you will go scot free. And so if you cut out telephony services, which means people can send SMS, people cannot make calls, people cannot use data for anything, you begin to wonder how they can now communicate and, and, and use whatever they have put in places to be able to come to town where people are, are, are many. And then they come there and take 100, 150, 200, 300 people away without being stopped. Then you keep wondering, how did they pack them? Did they march them straight into the bush and then they keep walking or they put them in vehicles and move them to locations? And because... Um, we, we, we haven't been able over a period of time to get the GSM architecture uh, to, to work to our benefit, where you have people who have registered with their faces, with their real names, and, and you ensure that when you pick, when you do a track down to how they carried out an operation, it becomes really very uh, interesting to say this number called from this place and that number received that call you go through the call records and you you establish the fact that okay this is the syndicate i mean this is a very syndicate operation mm -hmm. they actually planned it well considering the vulnerabilities of nigerians considering the 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 broke down the total breakdown of the of the of the country's security architecture because Nigeria is under police as we speak. And we are even not, and we cannot, we don't even have the capacity to be able to protect our territorial integrity anymore. And that's to tell you that we have decimated in terms of number, the number of people that can be, it's about ratio 1 to 150 today. Mm. One police to 150 Nigerians. And that's to tell you that Nigeria is completely, we are, we are far away from being safe and things will get worse. It is good that you gave the data because I do know that a number of people are actually on the side of the Honorable talking about um, the fact that we still have issues going on in the Northeast despite the shutdown of telecommunication services. Uh, and they are making uh, um, alternative measures and, you know, calling the government to, you know, make the weapons of the security forces more sophisticated than the people on the other side. Um, what other alternatives do you think we can focus on? Mind you, the Honorable is saying why we have to do this because it has not really reduced. This morning alone, we read on the newspaper review segment, uh, that's Nigeria now, uh, on a number of people were also killed in the Northeast. And this is happening in states where telecommunications um, services has been shot. So what other alternative measures can we take apart from what you spoke about, uh, talking about increasing the force of the security personnel? Now, uh, uh, that makes a lot of sense to me, Merciful. And, and I think the major, major concern uh, should be for the government, for people, the stakeholders, decision makers, mm. opinion, uh, you know, shapers, mm. need to really sit down and look at where, what we are lacking and then begin to come up with strategy mm. good enough to be able to put us back where we used to be or much more safer than Nigeria used to be. Now, we are weak territories. Nigeria is, is, is actually, you know, um, surrounded or probably, um, you know, uh, fenced by so many other countries. We have Cameroon, we have Chad, we have Niger, we have Republic of Benin, we have all of these countries. And people are beginning, the Chad, the Lake Chad Basin is so, has shrunk over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. When the Obasanjo government was, was in power, they knew that there was going to be a very great problem. America came into the scene and said, take five billion US dollars and let us look for a way to make sure that the Lake Chad Basin comes back to where, because it was, it, was, it was a protection for our country. But now 
is shallow. People cross it over, even on foot, because the water there is completely gone. Mm. And it's a means of livelihood for some other people. So Nigeria, especially stakeholders, political office holders, they need to sit down and begin to look at it. How many people are in the army? How many people are in the Navy? How many people are in the Air Force? How many people are in the Nigerian police? We begin from there to saying, do we have the number? It's one thing to get equipment in place. It's another thing to our personnel to be able to okay. use them. Mm -hmm. Equipment cannot, use, cannot just function on their own. Somebody needs to be trained. Somebody needs to be put in charge. Somebody needs to operate it in when it's time to be operated. Mm. So what, what, what are we talking about here? We need to sit down and be holistic in our approach. Mm. And that approach should be that. How many people do we need? All right. How many people do we need? When we, when we talk about personnel and we have them in place, then you can start thinking about equipment or uh, in terms of maybe upgrading them or getting new ones or you know changing what we have completely altogether. We have the uh, we have the jet fighters. They've been they've been delivered mm -hmm. and yet the country is not safe because you may not even have people to operate for all I care. You know, the yeah. Tekun, I mean the um, uh, I mean the jet fighters, the Tucano jet fighters that we got from the United States are very sophisticated. Soldiers or Air, Air Force uh, 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 guys need to actually be trained on how to maximize the use of those jet fighters. It's mm -hmm. not just flying them from one location to another and packing them. It's for you to be able to wage war against the opposition, wage war against everything that stands to make Nigeria to continue to be an unsafe country to dwell in. All oh, right. Unfortunately, because of time, we have to call it a wrap here. But thank you so much for joining us on the conversation. It's always a pleasure. Really, really grateful. And thank pleasure. you to our viewers for staying tuned to the conversation, showing your digital first Pan African news network. I do know that you already know that I have to tell you, you have to be a part of our social media community. Follow us across all our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. And don't forget the conversation comes away again tomorrow, right from the federal capital city of Nigeria, that is Abuja. Thank you again. Make sure that you stay safe. It's very, very important. My name is Merciful Ajinomo. See you tomorrow.